Hi, I'm Jamie. Welcome to Glowing Beauty Addiction. Welcome back if you're one of my subscribers and a great big hello if you're one of my new subscribers. Today is going to be a bit of a different video. So if you are a new subscriber or it's your first time here, I apologize. Um, usually I do a swoop shout out. Today for Sheet Face Sunday, um, I'm going to get a little personal. If you follow me on Twitter, you know that there's been some drama for me in regards to my family, and I've been letting it get me down a lot. So perhaps if I just spout, vent, talk about it here, um, I can get over it and get out of this funk and get back to being me and enjoying life. Um, I'm gonna try not to get emotional. This has been a long, brewing, ongoing thing, and I think I have finally just gotten to that point where enough is enough. Um, quite a few years, like more than 10 years ago, I had to cut my father out of my life, and you know, if you guys like hearing personal stuff, perhaps I'll do a story time on that sometime. But uh, today, we're gonna talk about my toxic sister and how we've gotten to the point that we've gotten to. Um, so let's get the beauty business out of the way and then I can start rambling. Um, it is coming on five in the morning. <laughs> I've been up since three. Uh, my eldest is having a sleepover with grandma and grandpa because they're at a rodeo nearby so he's camping with them and my youngest is here. Uh, he's been sick, so that's been adding to the uh, sleeplessness and stress of things, but uh, such is life of a mom. Um, just as a note, a few, one thing I really want to mention, I found these morning glamour, wake up feeling glamorous, satin pillowcases. Now, I got mine at Winners, and they are $9.99 each, and I know I've mentioned before, sleeping with silk scrunchie in to help your hair I swear these help like I haven't touched anything my hair stayed in scrunchie all night um it, they don't stain I thought they would because I use sleeping masks a lot but they haven't and they are they're comfy and they're nice to cuddle up with and that kind of thing um today I'm going to use the glam glow gravity mud firming treatment mask because with this lack of sleep I need a little pick-me-up. <laughs> so while I'm applying this, I will divulge into the uh, toxicity that is my sister. Now for as long as I remember, my sister's always been my little sister. I have been her protector. Like I'm talking when she was in grade school, she had this girl that would bully her all the time, like hit her in the back of the head with notebooks and stuff. I actually, because I felt bad about confronting, like my sister is only two years younger than me. I felt bad confronting a little kid. Um, this bully's big sister was in my grade. I actually fought the big sister to get the bully to stop picking on my little sister. Like I've had to run to her rescue so many times. Like I'm talking paying off my father to leave her alone, which backfired on me too. It's part of me really feels good to be done with it. Um, but it still hurts, right? It's my sister. She's blood. Um, talking to you guys <laughs> makes me feel better. Um, I don't know any of you in person. I've never met any of you in person you guys treat me better than she has ever treated me and that's why i think i've come to the point where i'm done and i'm gonna be okay with that um when i started really noticing what kind of person my sister was was probably when she was in high school there had been instances before that kind of made made me go oh huh. But when I had moved away to college, 
so she was home um, with my mother and father. Um, she turned into just that stereotypical, horrible, horrible teenager. Um, she would call my mother fat. She would break rules. Um, she was just, she was hurtful. Like, not just bad. She was mean. And she was hurtful to my mother. And, you know, growing up, my mother and I, we didn't get along all that well. Um, I broke rules, too. I was not an angel in high school. But I was always respectful. There, I, I can never even imagine talking to my parents the way she spoke to them. Um, and got away with it, essentially. Um, at one point, she had run away because she didn't like the rules and stayed with a friend because this friend, friend's parents were okay with uh, drinking and drugs and, and all that kind of stuff. I'm not talking hard drugs, you know, she was never a crackhead. May have acted like one, but she was never a crackhead but just smoking a lot of weed and whatnot. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say I was an angel. Like I said, I was bad too. <laughs> I may have uh, partook in the devil's lettuce a little bit as well when I was in high school. I certainly partied. I did all that teenage stuff, you know. Oh, Mom, Dad, you know, I'm going to go study at my friend Laura's this weekend. We have a test coming up. Yeah, we rode at the bush party. But, uh... But still, like even when I went out, if we all went to a movie or something and my folks said be home by this time, I was home by that time. Um, yeah. But it got to the point where my mother actually sent her to stay with me for a while. Like things got so bad there between them. Like I, I'll never forget my mother calling me in tears, crying about the things that my sister had said to her or done to her. And even though my mother and I didn't necessarily see eye to eye growing up, um, it bothered me. Because again, family, it was my mom. Somebody was hurting my mom. Um, so, so yeah, so she came, she stayed with me for a while. Um, and of course, I was in a big city because, as some of most of you probably know, I'm from a very, very small town, population of four people. Um, like we used to have to take the bus an hour to go to high school, that kind of thing. Um, so she gets to the big city, staying with me, and uh, you know her hair is all of a sudden dyed all these funky colors, which you know in hindsight, look at what I do. But uh, in a small town. Um, that was crazy, right? Um, that was not what country folk did. Uh, she got piercings and all this kind of stuff. So she did this while I was at work because I was working. I was going to college. I was doing all that on my own. Um, and now on top of that, supporting her over the summer. But uh, so yeah, so I had to send her home all hair dyed and pierced and all this stuff and of course you know there's no thanks that I looked after over the summer it was all would you let her do well I couldn't watch her all the time I had rent and bills to pay so you know life goes on um she finishes high school she goes to college she goes to college much closer to home and the entire time she's in college though um she's getting free food, she's getting her laundry done, she's getting money, all this kind of stuff. Stuff I didn't get when I was in college. Now granted, I screwed up. My first year of college, I drank it away. And you know what? I don't blame my parents for cutting me off. I don't. I deserved it. Um, it, it is what it is. Um, oh, before I get too far into it, I my second shirt came in from Nosy House Brow. If I sleep in it, it's pajamas. Um, so yeah, I'll link her channel because you guys need these shirts and support her channel. Sorry, my little man coughing. Um, so anyway, 
she gets through college. Um, she has a boyfriend during college. That all falls apart. Um, but years later, my folks are getting a divorce. And so at that point, you know, they're both my parents. Um, I w offered them the same things each. Like, if you need somebody to talk to, I'm here for you. Um, my father threw that in my face. My mother took me up on it. Um, my mother actually came and lived with me for a while. Um, I ended up getting out of a bad relationship and moving in with her after. But during the time of the divorce is when my sister decided she needed a loft. She did not want to live in an apartment anymore. She needed to have a loft. Like at this point, I'm still living in an apartment, but whatever, I'm working, I'm paying my rent, minding my own. So she goes to my father and, you know, says she needs this loft, she needs a cosigner, all this stuff. When she's talking to me about it, I tell her, I'm like, this is not a good idea. Not right now. If he co-signs for you, you're you're screwing mom over. Like it's gonna go against all the the money, the far, like all this kind of stuff. You are going to screw mom over so bad. Like don't do this. She does it. So my father ends up co-signing for her, which screws my mom out of a whole lot of money because it's against debt and all this separating of assets, all this kind of stuff. So my mom, who's later on in life, ends up having to leave that marriage with zero. She got the truck. That is all she got out of her divorce because of what my sister did. Um, she never got alimony, anything. She left with what she could fit in her truck. And that's what she did. Um, so she got her loft, everything else. She gets a new boyfriend. The boyfriend moves in with her within days. Um, then all of a sudden she's moving back to the farm. So she screwed mom over to get this loft and now she's moving back to the family farm to be with, with her father. I say her father because I refuse to acknowledge him as mine. But anyway, that's another story. Um, she moved back to the farm because my father, her father, whatever, had essentially told her that she would get the farm for free. So she's all about getting what is good for her. Um, when she told us she was moving back up there, uh, both my mother and I said, you know, you go. Um, we're, we're not helping you because we knew this was going to fall apart. We knew this was going to go bad. Um, but she moves. She goes up there with the new hubby, whatever. Um, under all these false pretenses, things are stressful because my father is an alcoholic. Um, so while she's at the farm, um, her and her husband, they end up getting married. Um, they have a kid while well, she gets pregnant first off. Um, then all of a sudden, midway through the pregnancy, she quits talking to me. I don't know what I said or did to this day. I don't know what I said or did. I had asked my mother and she had said, well, she took offense to something I said, I still don't know what that is, whatever. So, um, yeah, we go a long time, like her whole pregnancy without talking, whatever. Um, I think like the part reason why that makes sense is like it kind of goes to show like we have never been that going for drinks going shopping hanging out kind of sisters um she has another baby um then one day in the middle of the night her husband leaves her out in the middle of nowhere where this farm is um she's got the two kids i had said i was never going to help her again but we she decides she's going to move down here where my mother and i are um my husband and i we rent a storage unit for her stuff bart actually drives all the way up there to help her load stuff to move she never pay, repays us for the storage unit she never you know compensates us in any way i don't even know if we got a thank you really for him driving that gets like over 10 hour drive from him up there to help her move we get um, yeah, we help her move into her place. We're helping her with all this stuff. Um, nothing. 
Oh, and, and while she's living at the farm, I have a 67 Chev Malibu that's up there. I was finally gonna go get it, cause it's mine, it's my baby, I love it more than anything. We have it all lined up, cause she's at the farm, I don't have to deal with my father. Uh, we've got a car hauler rented, all this kind of stuff. She tells my father the day before, so that he blocks in other vehicles and stuff, so she screws me in the midst. Like, very short time before, all of a sudden, I'm having to help her move. Um, meanwhile, she gets here, she's got the two kids, I'm in Canada, it's cold, the block heater on her car doesn't work. So she has no heat in this vehicle and she's gotta be running around with these kids. The brakes don't work that well, all this stuff. So Bart and I pull money out of our account for her to buy a new vehicle. We loan her this money, which she pays that back. She does pay back for the car, but Amongst all this happening, like my mother had given Bart and I this really nice dining room table and it fit in our house really awesome and everything. When my sister moved down here, all of a sudden my mom's like, oh, your sister needs it and takes it from us. Like it's always been that way. If my sister needs something, that's how it goes. Um, so she gets down here, all of a sudden then there's custody issues. Um, her husband who is never, he left, I think it was like the day after their second kid's first birthday, and he's never tried to see them, but he's fighting and causing legal issues, all this stuff. She needs a lawyer. So Bart and I have to pay for her to get a lawyer to keep her kids. Um, we loan her that money as well. We do not get repaid. She swears she repaid it, but we've gone back because Bart and I are very, we keep track of stuff. She did pay us back for the car, but she never did pay us back for all those legal fees, which is a nice kick in the teeth. So she gets here. She actually does get a job for a little while. Um, she gets a new boyfriend. The boyfriend has rich parents. Um, all of a sudden she's pregnant. Oops. Um, so yeah, so now she's having baby three with second baby daddy. Um, and right after that, all of a sudden, she needs a bigger house. Um, but so she's got this third baby, but she doesn't want him to move in with her yet because she wants to be able to stay getting her social security or her subsidies, her low income housing, all this stuff. Um, but she needs a bigger house. She needs to live in a better area, all this kind of stuff. She keeps telling me, oh no, you know, baby daddy's parents are gonna help us. They, they offered, and she's getting quite upset because they offered help and why aren't they helping? And she's found all these houses and all this stuff. Keep in mind, my husband and I, we have both bought our own houses, got our own houses, paid off our own houses on our own. We've never gotten help from family or friends or anything. This is how we are. Um, so she all of a sudden oops is pregnant again so baby four was second baby daddy um and wow what do you know they're getting in a bigger house so baby daddy parents co-signed and helped get them this house um but anyway um when she got pregnant with baby three, I gave her a ton of my baby stuff because I don't need baby clothes that both my boys have uh, grown out of and stuff. And I gave her the crib and my nursing chair and the stool that goes with it and stuff. But I'm, I was very clear and I even showed her the text messages and stuff where I loaned this stuff to her. When we bought the crib, we bought the, the rails to convert the crib into a bigger bed. My son knows that this was gonna be his bigger boy bed and all this kind of stuff. We spent more on the rails than we did the crib. Um, so yeah, we weren't gonna just give that away. But yet she is gonna go and say that, oh no, you gave it to us. Her text messages when I brought this up was, I have nothing of yours, you gave it to me. So she's just this kind of personality. She'll take and take and take and use and use and use and then act surprised and a victim. Like her and Cookie and her Mango would get along great. Um, 
as of late, she's looking for, looking at houses again. So either she's going to end up pregnant again or something because this is how her, that's her modus operandi. Um, we've I I'm trying not to get emotional. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of cuts in this video. Um, a while back like a long while back um she had gotten this cabinet from the farm and this was a cabinet that my grandfather who i idolized growing up um had made for me uh he'd made her one as well but there were two of them mine was painted hers was not she had brought it up and gave it to her sister or to her daughter so it's like okay i'll let it lie I brought it up with my mother my mother's like oh i'm sure she'll give it to you as soon as she's done anyway blah 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 I had asked her back in March, like, can I get this from you? Because I don't have any contact with that side of my family, but I still idolized my grandfather and it was something I would like to give to my boys. To which case she said, it's not yours, it's mine, I gave it to my daughter. And I said, so you're going to steal this from me? Oh, it's not stealing. You can go to the farm and get the other one. She knows darn well I can't go back up to the farm because, like, there's been incidences between my father and I that... Let's just say cops could have been called. So, um, that's kind of what started this ongoing drama. So I hadn't spoken to her in a long time. No big deal. Like I said, we've gone long periods of time without speaking. So all of a sudden I was kind of like, okay, cause I've got to redo my, my walls in my bedroom. Cause as some of you might remember, I had water coming in through my walls and stuff. So it's been patched, but I haven't decided on colors. I thought if I'm going to go through the hassle of painting and whatnot, I am going to finally get this house looking how I want it to look. So my boys were so excited. They're picking out their room colors and how they want it painted and all this kind of stuff. So I text my sister and say, hey, are you done with that curb and chair yet? Because we're going to move it into Mason's room and he's going to have a little reading corner with that chair and stuff. And uh, she doesn't answer me. She says, oh, I've been waiting since March. Let's go for drinks. So I was like, that's not what I asked. Like, are you done with the crib and stuff? And she's like, well, let's get together and we can talk about it. Like, I don't want to get together. Are you done with it? Like at this point, it was like if she would have said no and left it alone. Okay, whatever. I'll make alternate plans until you are done or whatever. I say to her, I'm like, just let me know if you're done. Well, no, we need to go for drinks. I'm like, okay, point blank. I don't want to go for drinks. Like, let's just drop that. Are you done with the stuff? Well, I think we should go for drinks and we need to check and on. And it finally got to the point where I was like, I'm done. Stop drawing this out. I don't want to get together. I'm just done. Bring me back my crib and my chair and stuff because we're redoing Mason's room. End of story. To which she's like, well, I don't feel, I don't feel like I should have to give it back. And you're, you're being mean to me. And I don't know why you've gotten so bitter and mean as you've gotten older. Not bitter or mean. I've just had enough of your shit. Like, years and years of your shit. That's what's going on. So then it turns into she's not going to give it back because I won't talk to her. So I finally just said, stop holding it hostage. Um, bring it back. I didn't even lose my temper. Just, you know, have, have a good day. Then it's like, oh, I don't have, I'm not holding anything hostage because I, it's not yours. You gave it to me. I know I'm rambling. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to get mad or cry. Um, like my son is up so upset. I am so upset. Um, yeah, so this has gone on. So finally she's like, until we, until you tell me how to fix the relationship, then, um, I'm not bringing it back. So I said, I said, fine. Okay. Here's how you fix the relationship. You bring me back my shit and we'll go from there. No. So she's lied she's stolen um she's been like this all along um you know anytime i've gotten something good in my life you know when we get a new house or something she can never be happy she's the kind that's like well why do you get it and i don't um she continually has always always made me feel like a bad mom um like she has to one-up you so if I'm struggling because Bart works away and I've got the two kids and I'm finding it hard to do something, 
you know, it's never the I'll help you out. It's the, oh, I have to do this all the time with four kids. Sorry. <clears throat> she, uh, she uses people. She hurts people. Whew, okay, I should start feeling this. Um, you know, and what bothers me too is my mother um, is going to end up in the middle of this, which sucks. Um, you know, she takes my sister's side a lot, all the time actually, to the point where it's like I've lined my mother up to help me out in times and, you know, my sister will call her and I get dropped. So I've had no choice but to do all this stuff on my own, by myself. Um, you know, right now, my husband and I are paying my mother's mortgage right now. My sister doesn't help her own. Instead, my sister drops kids with her all the time, or the other grandma, or... This is the first time ever Bart's parents have watched the kids. This is the first time ever. Um, I shouldn't even upload this. This is just me rambling. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up. Um, I love this mask. Um, yeah. Anyway, family sucks sometimes. And as much as I'm mad at her, I feel like I hate her, even though hate's a strong word I don't use. Um, I'm hurt. I feel used, betrayed, all that kind of stuff. And um, I'm trying to get over it because there's bigger and better things in life. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm going through right now. You tell me, am I overreacting? Because you know, I've got some people that are like, it's your sister, you know, do what you got to do to save the, the friendship, the relationship. You only have one sister, or blah, blah, blah. And I get it. But, you know, I wrote my father out of my life. And it was probably the best thing I ever did for me, for my family. I've never looked back. There's not been a single time in my life that I've regretted that decision. There's been the odd time where it would have, you know, he'll cross my mind. Like when I got married... My mother walked me down the aisle and I was so happy with that. Um, for about two seconds, there was the, you know, my father should be doing this. And then it was like, ah, here's mom, yay, you know. Um, you know, I, I paid for my wedding dress, I paid for my shoes. Like, I have never, ever gotten help. And it bothers me that people like her and to my, my mom to an extent sometimes will go on and on about how they've had to do everything in their life by themselves but uh, where how anyway whether I post all this or not um, there's probably been chunks cut out because it's tough and I'm hoping that I'm going to get out of this funk and I hope I can get all this stuff off my face um, I do have a uh, hair product review coming up, special for Jason, um, and yeah, it's from a haul I made for my birthday, <laughs> which was on July 13th. Oh, and she couldn't even be bothered to text me on my birthday, so this goes to show how much she really wanted to talk and stuff. Couldn't even text me on my birthday. I had more of you guys say happy birthday to me than I did for my own family. So, anyway. I, normally I say I hope you enjoyed this video give it two thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and all this stuff but I know this was personal and rambly and who wants to watch this but um if you did like it or want to know more personal stuff that makes me want to cry <laughs> let me know um but I'm not going to be a youtuber that cries so until next time thank you for those of you who made it this far let me know if I'm overreacting um I'm gonna just keep going get out of this funk um, so until next time, I love you all so much.